and welcome to another booktube video from me Lauren from Lauren and the Books and today there is a big massive book haul put those up my nose um I have 27 bookish items here majority books but there's a film in there and also something Simon got me for my birthday which I feel we don't I'll just share I'll just share it um, so yeah, I've got some books from the publisher, um, from Simon for Christmas, and then, um, as you may well know, um, earlier this month I went to visit Simon from Savage Reads and his fiance Chris, and David and I went and stayed up there, and this time last year I came back, and I can't remember how many books I had last year, but I remember taking a photo and putting it on my Instagram, if I can find it I will insert a picture of it here, um, with a mass of books um, that I'd bought back, and I've got a feeling that this mass of books that I've got here, maybe not all the ones I've got from Simon, but that's to rival it, there's 20 seven books here so I will start as um I'll just keep going because otherwise we're all going to lose the will to live Evan to sit here and look at these so I'll start with the ones that have been sent to me by the publisher um and then move onwards so the first one is one that I'm reading at the moment and I'm absolutely loving it I think it's going to be a five star read and I'm just adoring everything about it so this is the proof copy of Big Bones by Laura Dockrill the finished copy will look like this which is I mean this proof copy is absolutely amazing I love all these drawings of food around and then the finished copy is going to look like this um Laura Dockrill is a YA writer she's written children's books before as well and this is a book about Bluebell who is a teenager um, and she's known as BB which also stands for Big Bones because she's a big girl and she doesn't even care she absolutely loves it she's so body positive I wish this was about when I was growing up and I was stressing myself out crying because I didn't fit into a size 12 anymore blah 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 she's amazing and um as, as well as it being amazing and this isn't a wrap up because I will wrap this up and talk about how much I love it but just so far like each so she, she's um she suffers from asthma and she goes to the doctors and they encourage her to keep a food diary and each um chapter is told through a different food so summer rolls for instance and egg fried rice and um what else we got cold pasta and it's just amazing like the descriptions of food in there are just so evocative and just like really bring them to your senses and make you remember meals you've had and things that you love that comfort you and what you eat in various seasons and oh it's just absolute perfection I'm reading this as well as eat up by Ruby Tando at the moment and they're ju both just absolutely bouncing off each other perfection um, and yeah I'm just loving it this is released on the 8th of March which is International Women's Day um, and I just feel like this is amazing I wish I had this when I was younger and I this is going to be so valuable to me I'm going to come back time and time again to this love it urge you and also actually we'll link you into this I'm doing a giveaway of a signed edition of this when it when it comes out um, and I will link the video down below it's um I'm running February I'm sure you've all heard about this so much where I'm reading and celebrating women in the month of February um, and as part of that I'm doing a giveaway and you can win a signed edition of this um, and I will link the video down below if you care to do that uh, the people at Hotkey Books were kind enough to also send me over um, the uh, the new editions of um, Lorelei, also by Laura Dockrill, and um, Aurabelle. So I've read Lorelei before. I had a different cover to this. I had a blue cover, like very similar to this, with like curlier writing. I read this, and this is about um, a young boy, Rory, and a um, mermaid coming to his hometown of Hastings. Um, I really, really enjoyed it I found it lovely I read it when I was um I read it before when I was on the beach in Pembrokeshire on holiday and it was just lovely it was such beautiful clear sea and just gorgeousness and reading a book that was set by the sea as well was lovely and then Aurabel um is set two years after Lorelei surfaced in Hastings and um it's to do with underworld politics and the tension below threatens to break up Lorelei's quiet life on land as a normal teenage girl so yeah looking forward to um revisiting these um Laura Dockrill I just love her and I, she can do no wrong in my eyes um the next book is also from the publisher simon kindly arranged this so as i said when i went up to stay with simon simon said oh i've seen a book um that for for state are publishing and i'd heard about it on um a good read which is a radio 4 podcast about reading um and he said oh, I've, I've asked them to send us two copies here this weekend <laughs> so i came home with this which had been sent to me from the publisher via simon's house thank you simon um and this is what she ate by laura shapiro this is six remarkable women and the food that tells their story so it's got um the six women are let's have a look dorothy wordsworth eva braun eleanor roosevelt and then it doesn't tell me anymore but those sort of people and different things about what they eat and stuff like that so yeah i feel like this is perfect for february and also like i love anything to do with food food fiction food non-fiction oh i just love it all so very very excited to um to get to this as well so let's go in there oh i'm worried about that's gonna fall off hi um and then the last one i've got is i'm 
super excited about. So this is The Trick to Time by Kit DeWall. Kit DeWall wrote, um, oh my God, my name is Leon. How did I forget what that was called? Um, which I listened to on audiobook, not last year, the year before. Absolutely adored it. Um, and this is her new book, which is set in Birmingham in 1972. And it follows an Irish girl called Mona, um, who has um, started a new job. And on the first night out, she meets William, um, an, an Irish lad, I think. And um, they embark on a passionate affair, a whirlwind marriage before a sudden tragedy tears them apart. Decades later, Mona pieces together the memories of the years that separates them. So I love Kit DeWall's writing and I feel very, very excited about this. And I I also love books that are set in Ireland or have Irish people in them. Um, so I feel very, very excited about this. Let's just have a look at the first line just together to be excited together because I feel very thrilled. Five o'clock Monday morning, there's a purple light far out to sea. Oh, I want to carry on. I'm going to read that in March. Um, and then the next two books are books that Simon got me plus something uh, for my birthday plus a little something that Simon got me. So this is another one. I think I'm going to go to this next. So um, this is Make More Noise, um, which has got a series of short stories in honour of the 100th anniversary of women's suffrage. Um, so it's been, it's been 100 years yesterday, in fact, um, since women got, some women got the vote in the UK. Um, this has got... Um, uh, authors such as Emma Carroll, um, Millwood Hargreave, Ali Kennan, Catherine Johnson, Patrice Lawrence, M.G. Leonard, um, Sally Nichols, and it's a collection of um, short stories from 10 of the UK's very best storytellers celebrating inspirational girls and women in honour of the 100th anniversary of women's suffrage. Um, so yeah, so what I've been doing, I've been reading a short story in the bath, and I feel like this is going to be my next collection of short stories that I'm going to be reading in the bath. So very excited about that. And also, one pound from the sale of each of these books goes to Camfed, and Camfed... I hadn't heard of the charity of Camfed before, but hold on, let me find out what it is. Um, Camfed is a charity which is tackling poverty and inequality by supporting marginalised girls to go to school and succeed. So, amazing charity. I'm definitely going to look into more that Camfed do. So, thank you, Simon, for that. And he also got me a signed copy of Three Things About Elsie by Joanna Cannon. Um, I read The Trouble with Goats and Sheep last year and loved it. I've been looking forward to reading this. This front cover is just dreamy. It is all set in like jigsaw puzzle pieces and it's a Battenberg cake. And this is about an old lady. It opens with an old lady who's fallen over um, and she's wondering if anyone will. Um, come and um, come and, and, and pick her up and get her back going again. So yeah, very excited about that. Just notice my lipstick is so pink. I've got this, um, has anyone else got it? It's the Lush one, it's called Black Rose and it changes colour like the more you put it on. So when I put it on, it doesn't look like I've put any on. So I really ran for it and now look, it's going like the pinkest ever. Simon also got me these very, very exciting things that I'm going to be putting out soon. These are LED Harry Potter lights that are potions bottles so these ones say um poly juice potion and then that one says potion number 86 always oh, got all different numbers on it oh all of them have got different numbers on them um, and they've got like little glittery bits in so i'm very excited about that and there will be adorning um me somewhere behind at some point so yeah very thank you so thank you simon for my lovely presence and then the last thing before i get into the books that i got from simon um the the volunteer i work for the nhs and um, we have a volunteer who comes in once a week and um she got bought this for christmas um, and she's watched it and says she probably won't watch it again. So I'm feeling very excited about this. This is Carol, um, which is the um, film adaptation of the book The Price of Salt, uh, written by Patricia Highsmith. Um, and yeah, so it's about uh, a, um, a, a woman working in a... Um, a, like department store on the run up to Christmas and then a woman called Carol comes in and she falls in love with her and they have like an affair and things like that so yeah looking forward to re uh, to watching that so I recently listened to the uh, Banging Book Club podcast where they uh, watched the film um, and yeah that was very enjoyable and made me want to watch the film even more so the next lot of books which are hella lot of books are all from Simon's house so Simon um, when I went up to visit him was getting rid of quite a lot of books and um, I helped him get rid of some of those books as well if you want to watch his um, unhauling, unhauling videos like sorting out his shelves decluttering his shelves and i was ruthless with him um i'll link that video down below but there was also a few books that he had oh sorry guys to disappear him there was also some books that he had like doubles of and things like that and i've got them here and um, this first pile of books are all um published by a publisher um world editions i believe it they are called hold on yeah, world edition. So some of these, I, I literally, I pulled them up, I put them in a bag and we bought them back from Simon's and I've just got them out of the bag now because we've just had such busy weekends and weeks. I haven't even had a chance to look at them. So we're going to be discovering them together. But this first little pile is from world editions. Simon's not even sure they make them anymore. If they do, I will link them down below. And they're all, um, 
they're lovely they've got like these what does that mean what's that called when they've got like curved edges they just feel lovely they're all um translated fiction um, and he had quite a big pile of them and i obviously picked out all the ones that were to do with women um this is shanghai blue by yu tao um, and this is about lan an adopted orphan she comes home to shanghai after 10 years in europe to try and locate her biological parents and everyone who could help her is evasive her identity is a mystery um i don't know if this is translated actually because the rest on the back say translated and this one doesn't so this one might not be translated but this is shanghai blue by u10 then i've got khomeini sade and me um, which is by ab nusay shalmani this is the winner of the english pen award this is translated from french and this is about ab nusay shalmani does not behave as a good iranian girl should she refuses to be veiled she is frank provocative intelligent and lively when her family goes into exile in paris she quickly discovers that paris cannot provide the freedom she longed for <gasps> So very exciting. Uh, this is The Woman Who Fed the Dogs by Chris Christian Hemerex. And this is translated from Dutch. Um, and this says here, Odette is the most hated woman in Britain, um, in Belgium. Britain. Um, she spends her days in jail for being the accomplice in a horrifying crime she was dragged into by her husband. Who is this woman? Why did she never stop him? Does she deserve a second chance or is she an unscrupulous monster? Mm. Uh, and then I've got The Darkness That Divides Us by Renate Dorostein. This is also translated from the Dutch. And it says here, growing up in a... Sorry to keep reading these out, but like because I've, I'm a bit out of sync of what I've actually got here. But as I'm reading them, I'm thinking they all sound amazing. Growing up in the peaceful Dutch village with her eccentric mother and their two endearing male lodgers, Lucy is the popular leader of the preschool set until a bizarre crime rocks her world. Mm. Uh, Craving by Esther Gerritsen. This is also translated from Dutch. Lots of Dutch translations here. The relationship between Coco and her mother Elizabeth is uneasy to say the least. Running into each other by chance, Coco... Uh, Elizabeth casually tells Coco that she is terminally ill. When Coco moves in with her mother in order to take care of her, aspects of their troubled relationship come to the fore once again. That sounds pretty good, actually, to read in um, February. I might put that over here. Motherhood relationships. And then the last one I've got is We and Me by Saskia de Costa, also translated from Dutch. And it says here, on a private estate near the top of a mountain lives the van der Sanden family. Neurotic, aristocratic Mika grooms her carpets while keeping a close eye on her family and the neighbours. So yeah, that's exciting. So those are all published by World Editions. And as I said, Simon's not sure that they're still published, but if they are, I'll link them down below. And then I've got this next pile. Again, I'm looking at them. None of them look very familiar, so we might have to discover them again. Oh, I'm going to move it a little bit closer because I'm worried that they're going to topple because it's quite a tall, tall pile. The first one is John Boyne, The Heart's Invisible Furies. Um, this is... Oh, this sounds interesting. So Cyril Avery is not a real Avery, or at least that's what his adoptive parents tell him, and he never will be. But if he isn't a real Avery, then who is he? As he's he's a character who's born out of wedlock to a teenage girl, cast out of a rural Irish community, and adopted by a well-to-do if eccentric Dublin couple by the intervention of a hunchback redemptorist nun. Hmm. I'll give that a go. Some of these I feel like Simon was like, read this, you'll love it. And some of them I picked out myself. This one I feel like has been made into a film or something recently. Um, the other Mrs. Walker by Mary Paulson Ellis. This is uh, published by Picador. Um, an old lady dies alone and unheeded in a cold Edinburgh flat on a snowy Christmas night. Should have read this at Christmas. A faded emerald dress hangs in her wardrobe. A spilt glass of whiskey pours on the floor. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, this is obviously one that's very familiar on uh, booktube I won't say any more than this other than this is Do Not Say We Have Nothing by Madian, Madeline Tien uh, this is a lovely one this is called The Cactus by Sarah Hayward this is published by Two Roads um, and this is about um, Susan Green it's her fiction um, she thinks her life's perfect she's 45 um, she's got a job that fulfills her and she's got a personal arrangement that provides cultural and other more intimate benefits and then she loses her mother and implausibly the prospect of becoming her mother herself susan's life is about to come somewhat messier so yeah hmm. i feel like that might be quite good for uh, february as well i'll pop that over here in my potential february um, pile this is one that i got from when simon was sorting out shelves this is under a pole star by steph penny and um, this is about flora Mackay who first crossed the arctic hello bubba who first crossed the Arctic Circle at the age of 12. Um, years later, in 1892, she returns to lead an expedition to Northern Greenland, defying the expectations of those who believe a woman has no place in this harsh world. This feels like I could read this in February too. I picked these very well. Um, but I believe Lauren from Reads and Daydreams didn't enjoy this. This sounds like I'm going to be well into it. Mercedes, have you read this? This sounds like something you would also be into. Um, it looks quite 
hefty though doesn't it it looks quite um big but yeah i'm putting it over here on my pile of things potentially for um femuary which has just got completely out of hand and is absolutely mahesive um the next one is from the heart by susan hill susan hill wrote the um the woman in black uh, which is the only susan hill book i've read and i've also seen the film and it's fucking terrifying this is about olive piper who's a happy open-hearted child growing up in the 1950s and her life is contented her passion for reading gets her into university. She feels as though the world is waiting for her, but then she makes a mistake, the kind any one of us could make, and faces an impossible choice. Then I've got a um, graphic novel of Miss Marvel, No Normal, and this is about um, a female um, uh, superhero, which I, again, have never heard about, and that's probably good for... Um, <laughs> February as well, so that's going on there. Uh, the next one is uh, Love Wins, which is a, um, I believe it's a non-fiction book about the lovers and lawyers who fought the landmark case for marriage equality by Debbie Senzipper and Jim Obergefell. Um, and this is, uh, they fell in love, uh, yeah, so Jim and his um, then partner um in uh, 20 years ago fell in love um, and they lived in ohio a place where gay men lived in fear of being arrested or fired from their jobs then in 2013 the u.s supreme court ruled that gay married uh, married gay couples had to be provided all the benefits afforded to straight couples jim and john who was then dying from als my god flew to maryland where the some where the same same-sex marriage was legal and exchanged vows on an on airport tarmac so yeah Oh, it says here. But back home, Ohio refused to recognise their union. After John's death, his death certificate would describe John as single. That's terribly sad. Um, then I've got The Growing Season by Helen Sedgwick. Um, this is published by Harville Secker. Not quite sure. I feel like this might have been a bit of a cover by. Um, now anyone can have a... Oh, no, I do remember this. This sounds exciting. This is like a bit Black Mirror-y. So listen to this. Listen to this. Now anyone can have a baby. With full life, safe and affordable healthcare plan, why risk a natural birth? Just choose the colour of your pouch and its accessories. And then it's about Eva, who was born as part of this. She sacrificed her career and maybe even her relationship campaigning against full life's biotech baby pouches. Despite her efforts, everyone prefers a world where women are liberated from danger and constraint and all can share the joy of childbearing. Perhaps full life had just helped transform society for the better. Ooh, so that sounds exciting. Oh, I am excited about that. Um, and then this one, Taming the Beast by Emily Maguire. This is about sex. Um, but I also... because. Simon, this had come off of um, Simon's shelf when we were de uh, sorting out his shelves. And I was like, I don't really like books about sex. And then I read the first line of the back and I was like, I would like that. Sarah Clark's life changes forever when her English teacher, Daniel Carr, seduces her after class. Their affair is erotic, passionate and dangerous, a meeting of minds and bodies. But when his wife finds out and he moves to another city with his family, Sarah is heartbroken. She drifts from one meaningless relationship to the next, seeking but never finding what she shared with Daniel. Hmm. Uh, a Good Time to Be a Girl, Don't Lean In, Change the System by Helen Morrissey. This ambition new book is inspired by Helena Morrissey's experience as a city CEO, mother of nine and founder of the successful 30% Club campaign to achieve more women on the UK company boards. This sounds amazing. A Good Time to Be a Girl is a manifesto for new ways of working for anyone, not just women. That's going in the pile as well. Good Lord. This one also I think is going to go in the pile. This is the penultimate one, guys. We've done well. 18 minutes. We've made it. The Girl's Book of Priesthood by Louise Rowland. Um, this is about Margot Goodwin, um, who arrives as the new curate at St. Mark's in Highbury. She's one part exhilarated, ten parts terrified. Um, she's become a fully fledged priest. Blah, 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 blah. So it says... Oh, this does sound good. When I'm reading this, I'm just thinking of the Vicar of Dibley. <laughs> <laughs> this is the most important 12 months of her life. Success would mean becoming a fully fledged priest a year from now, something she feels profoundly called to do. Failure would not only prove her father right, but also delight all the aunties who considered women priests an abomination. And then the last one is one that I've never read before, and Simon said it was an abomination itself that I read it. Um, it is The Woman in White by Wilkie Collins. Um, so this is about a sis. I don't even know what The Woman in White is about. Isn't that shocking? Is it called The Woman in White? It is. Um, Marion and her sister Laura live a quiet life under their uncle's guard. I'm reading this out. Everyone knows what this is about. So yeah, I've got The Woman in White to read as well, which is quite a chunker. But as I said, I'm reading a bit chunkier books this, uh, this year. So those are the books that I've got for January. Like I feel, no, for February. I didn't even get these in February. I got these in January. So this is just a big naughty book haul. Um, but yeah, hope you all um, enjoyed looking at those. Let me know if you've read any of those books before um, and if any of those have been enjoyable to you. And yeah, hope you're all enjoying February. I'm going to go and have a bath now because it's 
really cold. It's been snowing where I am and it just doesn't seem to be warming up. And my hands don't seem to be warming up. My mum, <laughs> just to keep going, my mum suffers from Raynards, which is um, poor circulation to the hands and feet. I don't think I've got Raynards, but I've definitely got poor circulation because I've always got cold hands and feet. Whining on about it. And now I'm going to go and have a bath. So I hope you're all well and I'll see you all again soon for another booktube video. Bye.